in theology is called a proleptic praise. It's to look ahead and praise God in advance. Amen. Hallelujah and praise God. We thank God for Karar. We thank God for Yay, the youth and young adults. We thank God for chosen generation. Amen. Amen. We, we thank God for each of you. Amen. And although I acknowledge everyone, I definitely want to acknowledge Sister Jamie as always because she traveled from Pittsburgh. From Pittsburgh. Amen. To be here uh, on a bus or a train, which one? On a bus, amen. To be here and practice, amen. And she does it as a service to the church, amen. And as a service unto the Lord, amen. Amen. Amen and praise God. I don't want to keep you too long, so I want to ask that you stand to your feet. We're turning now to First Chronicles. First Chronicles. First Chronicles. Amen. And if you do not have your Bible, you can look on in your bulletin, or you can look on on your iPad or tablet or iPhone or whatever else you have to read the scriptures. It's First Chronicles. It's great to see each of you on today. Amen. Brother Prather, good to see you too. Amen. First Chronicles chapter 4. Amen. Sister Campbell, amen. First Chronicles chapter 4. First Chronicles chapter 4. When you've got it, say, hoop, there it is. Oh, man, I thought you knew. I, I thought you knew. Uh, First Chronicles chapter 4, beginning at verse 9. First Chronicles chapter 4, beginning at verse 9. Very popular text and reads as such. Now, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain, and Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed, enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me, and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. Check it out. So God granted his request. Hallelujah. Praise God. And amen. Let us pray. And now, God, we thank you for your kindness toward us. We thank you for your mercies toward us. We thank you for your compassion toward us that fail not. They are new every morning. God, we thank you for just showing us over and over and over again that you are God full of grace and full of mercy. And now, God, we ask that you preach through us, that you bless the words to touch our hearts in such a magnificent way that we might lead different than we came. We thank you, God. And we love you, God. Solo deal Gloria, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, before you take your seat, uh, before you take your seat, just, just say to your, your, your neighbor, just ask Jabez. Yes. Now say it to your other neighbor, but you gotta, you gotta really say it. Just ask Jabez. Yes. Amen. And praise God. Amen. Amen. And praise. Just ask Jabez. Amen. The book of Chronicles can be called the book of events. It was largely written to the people of Israel when they were in exile. And while the people of Israel, God's people, were in exile, they began to ask God questions. They began to ask God's, God questions like, God, are we still your people? God, can you still work on us? God, can you still work through us? God, are you still with us? God, are you still for us? In their exile moments, they begin to ask God questions. And the truth is, all of us have been in exile once or twice before, and we've asked God questions. God, do you still love me? God, do you still have a plan for me? God, do you still open doors for me? God, do you still make ways for me? God, are you still God in my life? God, have you abandoned? to me. God, have you left me? God, have you given up on me? God, did I fail so bad that you can't pick me up? God! Every now and then in exile, we ask God questions. So the people of Israel in the book of Chronicles were asking God questions. And strangely enough, there were uh, more than 600 begots in the, the book of Chronicles. Begots. So-and-so begot so-and-so. So-and-so had so-and-so. 
It's one of those books that oftentimes when you're reading through the books of the Bible that you mistakenly skip about 30 pages because it has a lot of, be I know you haven't done it, it has a lot of begots. But in the midst of all of these begots, there is one or in fact two verses, only two verses that references a brother named Jabez. Jabez, what an interesting name. Jabez, what a strange name. Jabez, in, the, in all of this context, there's one name that is honored by the writer, that is honored by God, and that is the name Jabez. Now that's strange because the name Jabez would immediately sting the ears of the Hebrew listener because Jabez means pain. Jabez means pain. Jabez means suffering. Jabez means sorrow. Jabez means sickness. Jabez means hardship and hurt. And yet there is a brother named Jabez. Yes, Jabez in the middle of the text. Jabez in verses 9 and 10. The Bible says that he was named Jabez. Now keep in mind, this is before Shakespeare's sonnet, uh, rose by any other name, still smells the same. This was in the Hebrew context, and names were very significant. Names were, in fact, your destiny. Names meant so much that, in fact, God would often give names to give people a new identity. And here, Jabez is named pain. Now, all of us have been called pain at some point or another. Pain in the neck or pain in, well, a pain at some point or another. But most of the time, we are not called pain by the person who gave us birth. Most of the time, we are not called pain by the person who was supposed to love us and be dear to us and feed us on their breast. Most of the time, our mother does not name us pain. But Jabez had a nasty nomenclature. Jabez has a terrible tag. Jabez has a traumatic uh, name. Jabez's name is pain. All of us have been named by somebody that we didn't like. And I don't mean a name that's on your birth certificate, but I mean when you walk in the room and they start talking about your name. It may not be a name on your birth certificate. It might be a tag like divorce. It might be a tag like bankruptcy. It might be a tag like failure. When I told you before, I, growing up, I was in special education, and one of the, uh, the, the hardships of being in special edu education, every now and then you had to ride what was called the short bus. It was a 15-passenger. See, I don't mind because now I drive a short bus. Hey, Amen. It was a 15-passenger and, uh, and it was a yellow bus. And, and, and the worst thing that could happen, the worst thing that could happen to anybody in special education is somebody would call you a retard. Oh, my God. There was no more painful name than being called. I won't even say it. It was just so painful. All of us from time to time at this place or that place has been tagged with the title that was terrible and traumatic to us, and we could not shake it off. Jabez was named Pain. Just think about it. Are, are there any, is there anyone here today named Delilah? What about Lucifer? What about Judas? You see, in the biblical context, to have a great name meant everything. So there's somebody named David here. There's somebody named Nehemiah here. There's somebody named Joseph here. Because to have a great name meant everything. When you were born, uh, your parents would honor you by putting on you a name of recognition, reward, and honor. And yet Jabez's name was pain, was failure, was sorrow was sickness, was no good, was a mess up, was nasty, was Jabez had a bad name. And yet the Bible tells us, in fact, in the book of Ezra, it tells us that there was a, a city named after Jabez because Jabez, even with a bad name, became so successful. Uh, it said uh, historians and biblical writers suggest that people used to follow Jabez around just taking notes from the wisdom and the words that he said. Jabez became so successful that he had to be honored in all of the begots because even though he had a bad name, somebody said, Jabez is amazing. Jabez is successful. Jabez is off the chain. Jabez is blessed by God. If I had time, I'd tell you that the text opens by saying he was more honorable than his brothers. That is not a compliment. That is saying, and he came from a dysfunctional home. Not only was his name messed up, but his household was jacked up. He was the one who nobody invited them to the family reunion. They heard about the family reunion when it was all said and done. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was last week, though. Uh, because 
his home was dishonorable. And I guess it makes sense that his home was dishonorable because anytime you name your child something negative, it suggests something about you. And so Jabez came from a hard environment and had a negative name, and yet, and yet, and yet Jabez had an emphatic prayer, an emphatic prayer. Jabez had a passionate prayer that he took to the Lord. He had a passionate prayer that he laid at the feet of the Lord. In fact, I preached this sermon about 10 years ago, and I missed it. I really did. I missed it because what I did not see was one of the shortest verses or sh shortest words in all the Bible, the word oh. The word oh is there to emphasize how Jabez is saying what Jabez is saying. Jabez is not saying to the Lord, Lord, it is again another day, and I would delight in thou blessing upon me. Be good unto me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That wasn't his prayer. That wasn't his prayer. Jabez had a prayer where there was tears running down his face. J Jabez has a prayer where he couldn't get the words fully out of his mouth. Jabez had a prayer where he was just, in fact, in fact, it's interesting, uh, the word there is not he called upon the Lord, really. It's actually he cried upon the Lord. The Lord is, the word is karah. The dance team just dances, karah. And, and karah means in the Hebrew to, to bow in begging, to say, God, please, to say, help. Me, okay, y'all not feeling me. I thought this would happen, okay. Uh, it, was a, it was season five, episode 20, season five, episode 20 of one of my favorite shows. You know, I try to be scholar, scholarly, so I, uh, I do things like watch the Cosby Show. And so in the Cosby Show, uh, Theo broke up with his girlfriend. Theo broke up with his girlfriend, and so Theo went to his dad, Bill Cosby or Cliff, and Theo went to his dad and explained after sharing his heart and his hurt that, yes, I love this girl, this girl's going to be my girl, and, and so I'm writing her a poem to bring her back. Bill Cosby, as only he could do, said, well, son, that's not going to work. Son, that is not going to make it happen. That, that won't do. Son, what you need to do is you need to take it to the next level. And so Theo, being a good son, said, Dad, what, what is the next level? What, what's the next level, Dad? He said, well, you got to learn to beg. Theo said, it's, it's beg? And, and, and in the middle of the conversation, uh, Cliff gets up. And he gets a record and he starts playing the blues. And he shows him, he models for him what begging is. And so after he explains and models to his son Theo, uh, Theo is saying, Justine, Justine! He's begging God. Well, the word here is karar. The word here is to fall on your knees. The word here is to fall on your face. The word here is, I don't care what others think about me, what they see me doing. I need your help. God, oh God, bless me in need. Enlarge my territory. Let your hand be upon me. Keep me from pain and let me cause no harm. Bless me. Indeed, he was begging God. I know you're erudite, I know we're educated, I know we're sophisticated, but every now and then, if you really want God to do something exceptional in your situation, if you really want God to hear you on another way, at another level, if you really want God to move, maybe you got to get karar with God. Maybe you got to fall on your face. Maybe you got to cry unto the Lord. Maybe you got to give God all you got and let God know that you're for real, that you're not playing, that you need this, and you're desperate. God, only you. God, if it's no God, I cannot do it by myself. God, I am emphatically and desperately need your intervention. I tried before, but I keep falling back in. I tried to give it up, but I can't give it up. I tried to get the job, but I can't get the job. I tried to raise my children, but I can't raise my children. God, I'm desperate for you. God, I need help. In the face of a bad nomenclature and a dysfunctional home, Jabez had an emphatic prayer, not for sure, not for show, show or for fashion or to let people know that he's been in the church for a while using old English, not showing off. He just simply said, help God. This is my heart and this is my hurt and you are my help. God, help. And the Bible concludes verse 10 saying that God answered his prayer, that God said yes to his request. He, he had an emphatic prayer in a bad situation, and God blessed him. And I want to show you how he blessed him. I, I, if we could ask him, he would say, well, first, first God bless me because God caused me to prosper. That's really, uh, we're looking at the definition of the word prosper. In the biblical terms, the word prosper meant to clear out land and space and give it to somebody. 
He said, enlarge my territory. Now, now keep in mind, this is in times when cattle and, and, and that was your, your stocks and your bonds. I mean, you, you didn't have CDs. You had a cow. And so he said, enlarge my territory. Open up something for me in a mighty way. And God did it for him. It's Bruce Wilkerson in the prayer of Jabez who says, oftentimes uh, we have the right mathematics but the wrong equation. He says, oftentimes when we want God to enlarge our territory, we say, uh, my talent plus my education plus my experience plus my work plus my looks plus the opinion of others about me plus, plus, plus me and my minus my mistakes equals God's blessings. <laughs>